So next, I want to talk about what happens if we have a region that's not really a type 1 or a type 2 region. If I were to cut this up vertically, you would have these weird gaps in the middle. And if I were to cut this up horizontally, it looks like it could work, but it changes. My function keeps changing as I, as I move through. So the way to solve this is to chop the region up into pieces. And I'm going to talk about cutting up the region into three pieces. This top piece, the middle piece, and the bottom piece. And for the sake of illustration, we're going to do the top piece as a type 1 region, the, the middle is a type 2, and the bottom is a type 1. So first, let's talk about what the equations for these regions are. The inner circle in this case is a circle of radius 1, so that has the equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared, which is 1. That's the inner piece. And the outer one, maybe I put an arrow because it's the inner one. The outer one is given by x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And in this case, the radius is 2, so r squared is 4. And that's our outer bound. So let's talk about d1, this top piece up here. And we're going to break it up as a type 1 region using these vertical slices. So for d1, first we need to say, what are the bounds on our y values? They're starting down here at the constant line y equals 1. So 1 is less than or equal to y. And the top bound is up here along this part of the circle. So I'm just going to write here circle of radius 2. And what is the equation of the circle of radius 2 in terms of y? We know it's given by the equation x squared plus y squared equals 4, but I need to solve this for y. That gives me the fact that y is equal to plus or minus square root of 4 minus x squared. I just did algebra here. And we want the positive values because we're up here in the positive quadrant. So that means that our bounds on y, I'll push this up, are going to be given by y between 1 and 4 minus x squared. Now we need to know what the bounds of x are. We know that these horizontal line segments are starting here where x equals 0, and we go all the way to this point right here. But just by looking at the picture, I don't necessarily know what this x coordinate is. So I need to solve a system of equations, essentially. I need to solve when y equals 1, where am I at on this circle? So I'm going to solve, maybe it's an easy, it's not really a system of equations, but if y equals 1, where am I at on the curve x squared plus y squared equals 4? I just plug in 1 for y in this case, and I get x squared plus 1 equals 4, or x is equal to the square root of 3. So now we know what the bounds on x are. x starts Visually, we can see that x starts at 0, because that's where the region begins. 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to square root of 3. And those are the bounds for my d1 when I write it as a type 1 region. And I know it's a type 1 region because my x's are bounded as constants, and my y's are bounded between functions, although this is a boring function. Next, let's take a look at our second region. Whoops, sorry, I hit the camera. So our next region that we're going to look at is this region in here. I'm going to call it D2. And instead of thinking of it as a type 1 region, I'm going to break it up horizontally as a type 2 region. Um, it doesn't make sense to think of it as a type 1 region. So D2, in this case, my x values are bounded by functions. And my x values are bounded from this smaller circle to the bigger circle. So let's solve each of these circles for x. We know that x squared plus y squared equals 1. That means that x is equal to the square root of 1 minus y squared. And that's the left-hand bound. Whereas my right-hand bound is by the circle of radius 2. And so that means that my x is equal to the square root of 1 minus no, 4 minus y squared. And so those are our bounds on x. What are our bounds on y's? We need to know how many of these horizontal lines are we adding up. And our y's are just going from negative 1 to 1. So 
as a final product, I could say that my x's are bounded from square root of 1 minus y squared to square root of 4 minus y squared. And my y values are going from negative 1 to 1. And if I were to set up an integral, it would mean that my x portion would have to be on the interior of the integral, and the y portion would have to be on the exterior, because we need constants on the outside. Finally, d3 I'll do quickly, because it's going to be very similar to d1 up here. My d3 I'm going to think of as a type 1 region. Uh-oh, d3 you can't see. I need the picture. So for d3, we see that our y values start, they're bounded from below by this curve, and so that means that they're bounded by y equals the, the yeah, they're bounded above by negative 1, and they're bounded below by this curve, so they're bounded by the curve y equals the square root of 1 minus x squared, but notice that this, only, this curve only outputs positive values of y, and we want the negative part of this, right? Because we want to know y is negative in this case. They're down here at negative 2 or negative 1.5. So our bounds on y, this is our lower bound. y's go from negative square root of 1 minus x squared is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to the upper bound in this case is negative 1. And our x's are boring again. I'm not going to solve it a second time. My x's are going from 0 and they travel out until they hit this point, which is the same intersection point as above the x value of square root 3. So these are our bounds on x's and y's.